in the 1930s, right, you're a very young girl, right? And yes. then you became a teenager in the 40s, and then you went to Hard House. But yeah. When you were growing up in the Depression here in Toronto, yes. and listening to CBC Radio and drama, yeah. were your parents taking you to no. theater vaudeville? No. They were non-arts parents. So non-arts parents, but nobody had any money. So what was the first theatrical experience that you would have had in Toronto? Uh, well, the first theatrical experience is from school, we were brought to the Royal Alec. And um, now I'm trying to think of the dates of that. That would be the late 30s. Uh, and they had Ernie Rawley ran. He was, a, uh, he was the manager. Now, whether he owned the Royal Alec or not, I don't know. But he brought in companies from Europe and America and played in Toronto. And you could sit up in the gods for, a, for under a dollar. And saving my allowance and getting that so that I could come down here on the matinee days to, to the, the theater. Did and your parents know that you were coming down on matinee? Yes, day? they didn't mind what I, what I did. But take me back to the Royal Alex when you're going there in Weber 1939 and you're sitting in the yeah. gods and yes. you're seeing what? Hamlet? You're seeing you're, you're a Hamlet, British company? And uh, there was a French company. I, I just, and I can't remember now who they were. But it was absolutely fantastic. I mean, you remembered and discussed all these. I mean, you didn't understand them all, but, you know, it was, it was very important to see them. I don't know why it was important. I loved it, I guess. And it, but if you yeah. didn't have sort of arts parents, oh, that's fine by then. But how did you know that, that it was then important what you were seeing? I don't know. I just knew that at school um, I, I did whatever drama, that the serious stuff. I mean, we would do, we did Julius Caesar. Well, okay, I played Cassius. That was important. Then you played, did other diddly things. And yeah, well, I just, I knew all through school that's what I wanted to do, and when I said that to my father, you know, he sent me to the university. And your mother, what did your mother feel about it? She felt it was something I was, it's a phase you're going through. <laughs> you are not going to be on the theater. I mean, a public broadcaster has, yeah. you know, an utterly important place in the 30s and 40s, but equally in the... 2010s. And yes, exactly. But in the 30s and 40s, it kept the country together. Uh, people didn't go out on the Sunday nights with the uh, Sunday night theater, Andrew Allen stuff. All those Canadian writers were writing about stuff that involved us. And who wrote those dramas that you uh, listened to? As a, as it, a we listened to um, uh, Tommy Tweed, uh, Lister Sinclair. Uh, John Draney starred m in most of them. Jane did a lot. They had, Andrew had his coterie. Right. Yeah. And that went on for, for years. And what did that mean to you growing up as a young Canadian? Oh, well, it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, th uh, thrown into the Canadian stuff, we would perhaps get one from um, Turkey or uh, Lithuania. Or, I mean, you know, this is what these people were thinking. You know, it was, it was quite extraordinary. You were exposed to theater right across. Now, it was only radio. I mean, it wasn't dramatized. But it was stupendous stuff. And it, and it was reflected who we were. And did that, for the young Arabi, did that change your expectations of what you wanted <laughs> from your career or well, what you wanted from your country? Well, no. I always wanted to be in theater. But that last minute, when you're in grade 13 at the time, you are taken out by your father. And now, <clears throat> what are you going to do with the rest of your life? Well, if I had said I was going to the moon, he would have said, oh, well, now that's interesting. You do science and you'll get up to the moon. When I said theater, what? What theater? Now, I cannot support you for the rest of your life. What are you going to do in the theater? So he phoned Charles Jennings, whom he knew, and said, I've got this daughter. So Charles suggested, go to, send her to the university. She'll find all kinds of things there. And if she's not meant to do it, she will find other things. Well, of course, Bob Gill was here. <laughs> and he took, this is where I started. 
I this mean, stage. Uh, yeah, on this very stage. Those wings. Those wings. That the, stage all manager booth right stage. there. Yeah, exactly. And who was the stage manager over there striking terror to you, as they called the queue, or whoever it was? Well, uh, uh, the stage manager, well, Jimmy really ran. We had one of the kids doing this stuff, but the That's director. Jimmy Hozak. Uh, Jimmy Hozak. Um, Marion Walker was the secretary, and Bob Gill ran it. And he was quite an extraordinary actor, I thought, but he did spend the time directing. And then that uh, year he took um, the two Davises, Charm King, Hank Kaplan, myself, and somebody called Sam Telford. I, I remember Sam. I don't know what he finally ended up doing. He was a returned war veteran. Bob but, Gill was. Uh, no, uh, Sam Telford, so he probably went off. But he took us down to the Woodstock Playhouse in New York, 